what they've done with this car is really try to almost do too much and haven't quite got all the basics right. So I really don't know how to begin this. This is a, another SUV from China. It's another new EV brand. And this being the most expensive Chinese EV ever produced, I had very, very high expectations. And boy, oh boy, has this car met them. However, with a few caveats. So let's find out what they are. This is the Human Horizons Hi-Fi X, and this is fully charged. So you'd be right in saying the human what? Yes, the Human Horizons, a brand new brand. It's only been started a couple of years ago here in China. And this is their Halo model, the Hi-Fi X. And this, in fact, is the top of the range one. This is the Founders Edition. And it comes in at a whopping 800,000 RMB. Now there is a cheaper version at 570,000 RMB, but these guys have very bold ambitions and wanna take on the likes of Tesla and Neo. They have a very, very luxurious kind of ethos around the company, and we're gonna find out a little bit more about that today. The first thing you'll notice about this car is how striking it looks. From this front end with its LED headlights, these are completely programmable, and there's 1,700 LEDs in all of the four corners. So you can have love hearts coming up, you can have all sorts of silly things coming up. Uh, it does obviously function as your indicator as well. Now this orange color is very, very striking, as you can see, and everyone looks at this car. So probably not just because of the orange color, but because it's 5.2 meters long. This is no small car at all. However, it does actually feel like a small car, and I'll tell you a bit more about that later on. All right, so let's turn around. Now, this is the unique part about this car. Because it's so big, you expect it to not be very good at steering around tight spaces, but it's got rear wheel steering. So it provides an extra 10 degrees of steering on the back, which is fantastic. So I just turned around without going into the second lane just there, which is amazing for a car of this size. And I think this is probably what it does is slightly better than say the Neo ES8, which is still quite big. It can actually turn in maybe tighter spaces, even though it's still quite a massive car. And that's generally the feeling in here is that, yes, it's a big car, but it feels quite cozy and compact on the inside. It doesn't feel like you're driving something which is probably one of the biggest cars on the road at all. One of my other impressions is that the, the feeling uh, whilst you're driving is utter silence, complete silence. And that's aided by the, the air suspension as well, which makes it just float along the ground. Uh, you don't really notice any bumps. You don't hear any tire noise. It's really, really quiet, as you can tell. So if we did another turn, that's full lock and we've gone round very easily around that corner. The other thing is this rakish windscreen angle. It's the same angle as a supercar. It's about, I think they said 65 degrees. A Lamborghini is almost exactly the same. And that's what gives this car this sporty profile. And it's actually a lot lower than SUVs as well. I really like the look of this car because it feels very, very different to what we've seen on the market already. The other thing you'll notice behind me is no door handles. There's no door handles whatsoever. Everything is controlled by this key. And this is one of my biggest frustrations because a key should open the door in a very simple way. However, there's an instruction manual with this key and different key combinations to open different things. And for me, that's just a step too far. It's just a little bit too complicated. You know, you shouldn't have to read an instruction manual to open a car. The good thing is, you know, you get close to the car, the door will open for you um, and the boot will open, et cetera, et cetera. So it does have those features, but it's just a little bit too complicated uh, for this car. Now underneath the car is a 97 kilowatt hour battery. So you'd be thinking, oh yes, loads of range. However, this is quite a heavy car. It comes in at two and a half thousand kilos. So its range is only 550 kilometers of any DC range. Now that's a little bit of a disappointment, but it's a massive beast. So probably really not that surprising. 
Now, the other thing about this car and a lot of luxury cars as well is how fast they can do zero to 100 because that's really very important. This does it in three, yes, a three, 3.9 seconds for a car which weighs 2,500 kilograms. This does it in two, sorry, 3.9 seconds. That's incredibly fast. Now, we tried it out earlier and it does feel just like your whole body's been crushed into the seat. Very exciting feeling, but when you're driving this with maybe five other passengers, it's completely irresponsible. So don't encourage that at all. So a couple of other features, this does have all of the automatic driving features. So it has, uh, I think L3 driving, so, uh, automatic driving, it also has L4 automatic parking. So you can get out the car and it'll park itself, which is a pretty cool feature as well. As you can see, it started raining, which is wonderful uh, weather to film in. So we're trying to get this done as soon as we can. Now at the back of the Hi-Fi X, this is really quite cool. So you've got these, these are the LED lights, part of the 1,700 LED lights in this car. Again, these can be programmed to show things, I think, obviously not when it's driving, when it's parked is like a showpiece. One interesting feature of this is all of this is LED so that there's an LED behind the actual logo as well. That's very cool looking. And a really interesting feature is actually when you're parked. So it's a bit bright today, so you won't be able to see it. However, when you're parked and you get close to the car with the key, uh, a luggage icon will shine on the floor here. So not next to the car, but just here. And all you have to do is just step into that icon and then the boot will automatically open. Now that's a really quite a good feature. Um, we're not gonna get it to work here because it's raining and uh, I'm having trouble working out the key. Now, this is the boot, a lot of rubbish in here at the moment. Uh, so it does actually have six seats in this car. There's two versions, there's a four seat and a six seat. Four seat is mega luxury. It comes with a champagne holder. Obviously that's completely ridiculous. This is the six seater and I'm going to talk about these back seats in a little bit. But you come with a decent amount of uh, boot space even with the six seats. I mean it has to with it, with it being 5.2 meters long. So I just want to show you how these doors actually work. So you do actually have these two tabs here which you can press and they open. So front door, one press, that opens, it will detect if anything is in the way uh, and not open any further. And in fact, this opens almost at 90 degrees. So it's great if you're getting in and out of the car, really easy access. The other one is the back door, which is a suicide door. Very cool. Quite, quite, quite a cool feature. Uh, now, as you can see, it wouldn't be very easy to get into the back of this because there's literally no room to get into the back. Now that's where HiFi have thought of an electric solution to this. So if you come in, there's a button on the back here. You press that easy entry. and this slides across that way. It says easy entry moves towards, front seat moves towards, and then it folds down as well. So you've got loads of space to get in the back. Doesn't solve the issues you have with space in the back, but it makes the in, uh, entry and exit over there quite simple. So as you can see, I'm now in the third row of the Hi-Fi X. And this is where I think some of the shortcomings of this car become apparent. So I don't have the most leg room. You know, this, this seat in front could go for us a little bit more. Now, my, my biggest issue is I don't have any windows back here. So out the side here, there's no windows. So it feels a little bit claustrophobic. I do have a window just above my head here. I've got a tiny window I can see out just outside the front there. So there's a feeling of like kind of claustrophobia in here, which is um, a little bit of a, a downside. You know, it does feel quite tight in this cabin. For, I think for every passenger, it, you know, for such a big car, it feels quite tight, quite small, almost quite cozy. But I think back here, that coziness kind of disappears. Uh, I do have my own air conditioning. I've got a mirror um, and I've got my own USB slot. And obviously these seats can slide forward slightly to give you a little bit more uh, boot space. In the four seater version, there's none of this. They've just got the two massive like luxury armchairs with your champagne holder in the middle. Ridiculous. A really nice feature of this actually is that there is a button back here. So when you want to get in and out of the car, you push this button, the seat, you know, it obviously slides forwards, but it also slides inwards. So that's both these seats here will slide that way to let the people in. That's a really nice feature and I quite like that. Now this is obviously the best place to be. It's in the co-pilot seat. So the pilot is sitting there and I am the co-pilot. Now I don't do much as a co-pilot, but what I can do is watch my giant 19 inch display here. So it's got apps, it's got videos. You could do all sorts of things, download things. It's connected to the internet. 
you know, very, very good here. Now, it doesn't have a glove box, so you've got rid of your glove box, but you've got a screen instead. I don't know how practical that is, not very. You do have space, obviously, underneath here. You can store a few things, and this is quite deep as well. Uh, the other interesting thing is this seat reclines almost fully flat, and it comes out with a, a footrest as well, so you can literally lay down and watch TV whilst someone is driving next to you. That's pretty luxurious and a little bit ridiculous. All right, let's jump in out of the rain. Now, if the outside looks like a spaceship, the inside feels like a pilot's position. It just looks and feels incredible. Now, I am surrounded by screens. I've got my screen in front of me here. I've got my navigation screen here. And then the passenger has a screen as well. The feeling of driving this thing is very, very comfortable. This rakish windscreen, I've actually got quite a lot of visibility as well. Uh, they've got a um, screen for this, so it's not an actual mirror, it's a proper screen for the uh, rear windscreen mirror. That's very good in, in, uh, when it's a little bit dark. When it's bright, it's quite hard to see, so that's a little bit frustrating. In here, obviously, all the fixtures and fittings are pretty top-notch. I think there's a couple of like maybe small plasticky bits which could be improved next time around but I think they're well on their way to um, uh, creating a really good halo car. Now, the really good thing about this interior is the use of su sustainable materials. They are using recycled suede up here, so this can be recycled, and they're using uh, vegan leather for all of the chairs as well. So that's a really great step for these guys. I'm glad they've done that. Now, this chair also has air conditioning because it's luxury, so it's got to have air conditioning. There's all sorts of LED lights in here as well, so I can set the mood uh, of this space. So I, could, I think I've got 56 different colors uh, across all of the, the doors and the displays. Very uh, unnecessary really, but quite fun. So powering this car is two electric motors, one at the front, one at the back. It's very much a skateboard chassis uh, underneath this car. So I think they're gonna be using this in more of their models. So it's very modular, very flexible, um, and it's completely four wheel drive. So again, you, you have to be with a car of this size. When you're trying to get to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds, you obviously need four wheel drive. You know, this, this has every technical feature that you want and more, and it oozes, you know, complication I think. I think some of the things are, are very welcome. I think they're really good features. You know, the, the screens in here are quite cool. You know, the, the lane assist, the rear wheel steering, you know, all of this stuff is great, but I think there's just too much of it. I think you'd need to study like a book or a manual on this for about three weeks before you'd be able to actually get in the car and drive it. Now, as you can see, I'm looking pretty comfortable in this back seat right now. And that's because I have two very unique features. So I've got my footrest, which is starting to come out here. I can push that and it, oh, wrong way, wrong way. Oh God, I've gone the wrong way. And that will flip up. This seat also has a massage function. So I think in the back, it's got something which just starts pummeling your back very slowly, which is great. The other thing, which I think is a great practical feature, if you've got 800,000 RMB to spend on a car like this, is that it has ISOFIX. So you can put a baby seat in. And I have put my baby in this seat this weekend and it's been very comfortable and very easy to do that. So it's got two ISO fixed seats here um, and I think that's a really good practical fit feature of this car. So the one complaint I would have about this car is there's just a few little niggly bugs which haven't quite been ironed out yet. And I think some of the materials in here could do with a slight bit of improvement. So there's a couple of plastic trim pieces in here, which are just a bit, uh, need a little bit more thought, let's put it like that. Um, and the other niggle for me was yesterday, it was torrential rain for about three hours. We're in like typhoon season here in Shanghai. So there's a lot of rain uh, all of a sudden. So the roads were flooded within about half an hour up to about, um, I don't know, 30 centimeters. And this was on the highest wiper blade setting. But after a minute, it had a rest. So when you can't see out the window for 10 seconds because it's having a rest and then it starts again, that's a little bit concerning. So, you know, have the electric motors in the, for the windscreen wipers not been designed well enough or could they do with upgrade? Just these very small, small niggly things from, you know, a new halo car. If you're spending 800,000, you kind of want those niggles to be worked out first of all. But hey, it's, you know, this is pretty much hot off the press. Um, it's one of the first ones off the line. So, you know, they do have time to kind of improve it and make those changes, and hopefully they do. 
However, this car is important in more ways than we might think. The use of sustainable materials on the inside, this is gonna cause a trickle down effect to those smaller EVs in the near future. As a halo car, as a halo brand, as the most expensive EV in China, it's going to appeal to a select few people. However, in five, maybe 10 years, all of the technology, all of the materials in this will trickle down to those little EVs. So that's why I think this car is more important than we might realize. However, it does have one issue with me. I think they're trying to be too technolog technologically advanced for their own good. There's, they've tried to do everything and they haven't quite succeeded in everything, but they're on their way there. I think maybe their next car or in a year's time, this will be much, much better. I just don't think they've quite nailed it at the moment. So that's all we've got time for. It's now raining very heavily and I'm getting very wet. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. We've got loads of Patreon links, YouTube memberships, subscribe button around this video. Got lots more videos coming from China very soon. And if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>